Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today we're looking at Millie Marotta's Brilliant Beasts. So this is uh, another collection of Millie's favourite illustrations from her colouring books previously. There are no new or original illustrations in this book. It is a collection of pages from her previous books. So I don't know which books, probably all the books. Um, I think she's done about five five or six books uh, but this is kind of um, a pick and mix from those books so as usual with Millie's books we've got a half monochrome half coloured front cover with beautiful gold foiling to the title and some of the details in the leaves as well then on the back it just explains a bit more so it said a collection of brilliant beasts from the number one best-selling colouring book illustrator Millie Marotta yes so it is a collection of illustrations from Animal Kingdom, Tropical Wonderland, Wild Savannah, Curious Creatures and Beautiful Birds and Treetop Treasures it features a hundred illustrations in total it celebrates everything from the mighty rhinoceros to the iridescent jewel beetle from the gargantuan giant squid to the lovable fruit bat the mischievous raccoon to the graceful sea lion. Let your imagination run wild and roam these pages for an adventure with brilliant beasts. So yes, you will have seen all these before, so I'm not gonna take kind of too much time going through each one, but you can see which ones have been included. I'll go through every single page. So yes, do you like Millie Marotta's work? I think that um, it's so, so popular, especially when the, the colouring trend first came out, it became really popular. You either had a Johanna Basford book or a Millie Marotta book or both. And Millie's work is just so unique. You can tell it from a mile off. You know it's one of Millie's books or one of her illustrations as soon as you look at it, because we have all of the, uh, the gorgeous little sections that make up the, the different animals that she includes. So I'll just go through it. We do have some illustrations that are contained to one page and some that are double page spreads, but it is all double sided. So whatever media you use, you'll have to make sure that it's not going to bleed through to the other side. Otherwise, you are going to end up uh, leaking through and ruining your illustration behind. So it follows the same size, shape and format as all of her previous books. I feel like I say that quite a lot, that phrase, size, shape and format. Um, so it's square, it has very bright white paper, nice tooth to it, nice thickness, not too thick, but not thin either. Um, it's easy to colour on and... I mean, the, just only one of Millie's books could probably take you an age to actually complete. I don't think I've ever seen anyone finish a Millie Marotta book in its entirety, which is probably a testament to the amount of value colouring hours you're getting in a Millie Marotta book. I mean, you don't even have to follow the sections. And by that, I mean, well, you'll see what I mean in a second when we get to my coloured page. But it's not like you have to use fine liners and colour every single tiny section individually. You can do what I did which is this here. So as you can see, I've taken the stripy bits of this wasp nest and I've just coloured them in an ombre gradient, the whole thing. I haven't done each and every single one. Um, similarly, I haven't done each and every single line that was in these little swishes. I've just gone over them and created a, a shiny look. And then I actually did colour all of the little blue sections in ingredients there but you know what I'm saying is you don't have to look at a Millie Marotta page and be daunted by the amount of sections you can treat it as if it's just one area that you can colour in all in one go so what did I colour this with I believe I coloured this with Arteza pencils yes I think I did and um, I really like how it's turned out it could probably do with a background even if it's just a, a straight solid blue wash or something but yeah, I like how it turned out. I like the colours. It almost looks like it's made out of jewels, doesn't it? So that's that. So like I say with the shark, instead of having to do every single little bit, you can just use each stripe as one particular section if you wanted to. I think the most effective um, colouring, coloured pages that I've seen finished from Millie Marotta's books are the ones where people have just ignored the sections and coloured them, you know, as is. So, you know, doing a lot of solid block colouring in places and gradients overlapping all the different sections. So, yeah, give it a go. I'm, I always was a little bit daunted by Millie's books, I must admit, because of the sheer amount of detail. But honestly, I mean, even these little like sections here that seem to have gaps in between, you could just colour this whole thing, ignoring the different the different parts of it. 
So we've got all kinds of animals here. As I say, it, the illustrations are taken from all of her different books. So it could be marine animals, it could be animals from the savannah, it could be tiny little insects, it could be domestic animals. Uh, there's all sorts in here. And I believe at the back, once we get there, I do want to show you every single page, even though I'm going quite fast. You can pause or slow down the video if you wish. I think at the back we're told what the animals are. So let's just get there. There are some mandala-esque illustrations included in the book as well. They're not all landscape scenes or what have you. So a little bit of something for whatever mood you're in. I really like this one. I don't know what this is. Hopefully we'll find out at the end. This looks like, I know that it's not, but it looks like some sort of sloth, but I know it isn't because it's got this huge kind of tash thing here. It's some sort of monkey, isn't it? Is it like a howler monkey or something? I don't know. We've got a porcupine and a moose. A big whale, I think I coloured this in the original book. We've got a bear, we've got anteaters, hopefully. <laughs> and a chameleon and a walrus and a big what is this it's not a flamingo is it an, an ibis or something i don't know um oh this is an interesting looking moth and we have some under the water creatures narwhals we've got some more exotic looking creatures jungly creatures we've got a camel and is that a bison? I don't know why I'm asking you, you can't reply. <laughs> well, you can, you can tell me in the comments, but I think we might find out in a second. Got a dragonfly, another one I think I coloured in the original book. Got some hammerhead sharks. Raccoon, I think. Ah, yes, here we go. So I think that they're all done in order. So you have to kind of go through and see which is which. So let's just check. So yeah, second to last was raccoon. Yeah, there we are. So they're all in order. Um, there was one that I wanted to find out what it was and I've forgotten now. Uh, let me just check. What did I say it was? Some sort of monkey, didn't I? Uh, Mona monkey? No, I don't know. Oh, a tamarind monkey. That might be it with the, with the tash. Yeah, I think it is. Anyhow, it is nice to actually have this list, this glossary of... Um, the names of the animals because you can go through have a look online at some reference pictures if you have no clue what it is or you don't know what color they are you've then got a couple of testing pages you can either create your own brilliant beast if you think you're good at drawing i'm not <laughs> or you can use this as i would as a, a different kind of marker and pen testing thing just like that so uh, what i'll do is i'll take one of my water-based tombos i'm just gonna see really how it reacts to water-based pen no, there's absolutely no shadowing or anything there just go over it a couple more times to be fair yep yeah, nothing so you can see you can use your water-based pens without worrying about them bleeding so there we are um it's a gorgeous book and I do love Millie's work it's not my favorite you know it's it's not what I choose to color every single day but I think it has its use it has its purpose and for me that is when I'm feeling a little bit anxious and a bit on edge and I crave just filling in gaps. I think that's where I turn to Millie's books. I do wish she'd bring out a brand new original book. Um, it feels like ages since um, Treetop Treasures came out. It probably isn't. But um, instead of having these collections, I would like to see her bring a brand new book out. Something else I've spotted on Amazon is that she's about to bring out all of her books, you know, Tropical Wonderland and all of her books in mini format about this big. Um pocket colouring I guess take around in your bag but I can't imagine how tiny these gaps are going to be uh, within those tiny books but yes please Millie if you're watching do us a brand new book soon if you have the time and inclination to do so because we do love your work and uh, yes let me know what you think of the book in the comments as always links will be in the description for you to go and buy this wherever you live and I hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire